Welcome to the Garlic Marketing Show. Ian Garlic here, and today we are going to talk about simple versus easy marketing. Uh, it, it's a big differentiation, but I think getting this mindset, coming up with these ideas, and really understanding it is going to help you in your marketing. Now, don't forget this is always brought to you by StoryCruise.com, the ultimate resource for video marketing. You can find all the strategies there. Uh, you can find videographers that know marketing all around the country. Just go to StoryCruise.com. So I'm excited to talk to you today about simple versus easy because I think this is a big, big confusion. Uh, a lot of people have come to us and go, hey, I, you know, we, we make it seem simple, right? And it is. Marketing is simple. Uh, winning a lot of things are simple, but it is also not easy. Let's step back. And I'm, at the end, I'm going to talk about, you know, the simple, simple approach to video marketing. Um, but right now, we're just going to think about it in some other terms. Let's talk about the games that we play. Golf. Golf is a simple game at its core. You have a stick, you have a ball, you hit the ball with a stick until you knock it in the hole, right? We buy, it. we make it more complex with all these tools, all these training tools, all these clubs, all these different swing lessons. I was talking to my friend yesterday, you know, he was talking about uh, all the different ways he's getting better at golf and the slope of the course and the handicap. Um, and is all this stuff to make it more complex. And we tend to go towards the complex instead of focusing on the simple. And golf is a perfect example of how infinite, infinitely complex we can make something. Whereas, you know, practicing your putting over and over and over again, it's a simple thing to do to, for most people. And my friend yesterday told me about, you know, three putting, four putting, a few court, you know, holes. That will bring down your score a lot. You know, marketing is a, a lot of the same way, but we get distracted by all the tools, all the shiny objects about buying new clubs. Um, another thing, chess. Chess is a perfect example. It's at its core is a very, very simple game. You know, you have what, five pieces that move very simply, but it has, and it has a limited amount of uh, possibilities limited amount of moves i mean it's a lot of moves but it's a few million i think uh, i didn't do the research you can tell me if i'm wrong but it, at its core it's a simple game right uh, but it's not easy it is not easy to win constantly at chess the fundamentals are simple right and fundamentals win championships in anything all right free throws win championships you know you talk about if you watch uh old footage of Kobe Bryant, who is arguably one of the best players who started with mediocre talent at best. And he admitted to it. He had to work really hard. But after every game, he's sitting there, jump shots and free throws, jump shots, free throws. It's not fancy. He knew he needed to practice those free throws. We just saw, we saw it recently in the NBA championship, but you know, in the 1962, Will Chamberlain, I talk about this all the time, had a hundred point game. What was the difference between it? You know, if we listen, if you listen to Malcolm Gladwell's podcast, The Big Man Can't Shoot, it's a great um, evaluation of the story, an evaluation of the fact that Will Chamberlain shot free throws underhanded that season and shot, I believe, 82% free throws, which made him much more dangerous. So they had to stop him. They couldn't follow him as much. He ended up shooting a 100-point game without three-pointers. A 100-point game in the NBA without three-pointers. The key to it was his free throw percentage difference. Um, I'll you, you can argue all this stuff, but we just saw NBA championship. Giannis at, at Milwaukee Bucks. Milwaukee's my hometown. I was super excited to watch that game. I got I was lucky enough to be at my friend Tony's house, uh, Tony Redmire, who started off the season. And... You know, we were watching it, and Giannis just kept going on the free throw line, shot, I believe, 18 for 19 free throws. And his free throws had been miserable. It's not luck. He sat there and did the simple but difficult thing of free throws and won the NBA championship. Because, I mean, yes, he scored and played spectacularly well in other places, but they could not follow him as much because of free throws. And, you know, you look back at, and I talk about this all the time, simple, talk about simple, 
the most winning college basketball coach, one of the most winning coaches of all time, John Wooden. John Wooden, UCLA, you know, 10 NCAA championships. And I'm just always amazed by this because you think about this, match of your business every four years had a completely different team. Right? And some of you, maybe that's happening and that sucks. I'm sorry. But uh, <laughs> imagine if every four years you had a completely different team. That would be tough. And you're lost. You knew every four years you were going to, at least every four years, maybe three or two years, you were going to lose your best player. And, you know, it, it, you have to focus on what wins. And what do you do? Focus on fundamentals. Even fundamentals, not just free throws. Everyone learned to tie their shoes the same way. So simple. And these are college players going to, you know, recruited college players. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, at the time, Lou Alcindor, who coincidentally, uh, you know, took Milwaukee to their first championship. Uh, he had to learn to tie his shoes the right way. Imagine these, these great players walking in going, this is the way we do it. It is simple, but not easy. And you think, well, tying my shoes is easy. But sitting there day after day and practicing those putts, practicing the free throws, looking at the little nuance thing and getting better at it, it is simple but not easy because it's not exciting. It's not fun. It's not It's not the best. You know, it, it, it's not as exciting as, oh, let's go drive a ton of traffic and let's get tons of PPC clicks, right? Uh, there's so many sexy things in marketing that you're being sold. But let's look at, too, let's take it closer to the business realm, right? Apple kept it simple, but not easy. Sip constantly simplifying it. It's so easy to make things complex, and I'm so guilty of that, too. I'm so guilty of it to make things more complex. But if we can focus on the simple things, the simple things that work, and look at what works. And we're going to talk a little bit about you know what I know, because video marketing is marketing. And there's fundamentals to it that are never, ever going to change. Yes, there's some cool stuff you can do with video SEO. We do that all the time, get the videos ranking. But if you don't get the fundamentals down, you are not going to win those championships. And I said I was going to take it back to some business. I, let's look. You know, the Rolling Stones drummer just passed away. One of the Arguably one of the greatest rock and roll bands of all time, right? If you went to a Rolling Stones concert, you expected to hear Satisfaction. You expect it to hear Jumping Jack Flash. If you go to a Jimmy Buffett concert and you don't hear Margaritaville, you're going to be pissed. Do you think that those they love playing those songs? I mean, I, they, they find the love. And it's simple for them. But it's not easy to go out and play the same five, six songs every night for 40, 50 years. But it makes for the greatest bands of all time. Because inside of their... They get better and better and find new ways to present it, new audiences. Simple versus easy. It's not going to happen. So let's talk a little bit about video marketing. Um, you know, I, I, before we get into it, I know you're thinking, well, I, and if it's so simple, why isn't everyone doing it? Because it's not easy. It's not easy to stay focused to play that game year after year because you're not going to win my clients and you know the people I work with don't win year one, year two, year three. They win the marathon because they're playing that game. Tony Gremmeyer, who I mentioned, you know, had 20 years of consistency, of constantly making their business simpler, better, getting more focused, and knowing where their simplicity lies and how they can improve it. And you know. I mean, for, I think it's we said ten years on the Inc. Five Thousand list. It, it's amazing. I might be, you know, I'm off of my stats. I'm not doing research. You can go find it. Five, six years. One year on the Inc. Five Thousand is amazing. But to have a company that's twenty years old and constantly growing and constantly doubling or tripling, you have to look at that. And part of it is the consistency, and the consistency and the simplicity. And before we get into the video marketing thing, I mean. I, I did a quick video on my personal YouTube channel uh, about learning, and I'm constantly learning things. I love to learn things. So I learned to play the ukulele. And what I learned is, at first I tried to do all the complex stuff and learn an entire song. But then what I learned is, that I, hey, first I just need to learn chord changes. So I just sit there and 
core change, core change, core change, core change, core change. But instead of doing hours of it, I did 10 minutes every day. It was boring as hell, but it was simple. And guess what happens? You get better at that simple move. And same thing in your business and your marketing. You need to focus on your marketing. Your customer stories, they're not sexy, but you need to collect them. And you need to be constantly collecting them and getting better at collecting them, better at crafting them, better at using them in your marketing, better using them in your operations, better at using them in your sales. If you do that, it's simple. It's going to take some time, but it's not easy. And it's not easy because otherwise everyone would be doing it. You'd see everyone's customer stories loaded up. But there's tons of excuses of why not to go and play the hits every night. There's tons of excuses why not to collect your customer stories the right way or go the cheap way on customer stories, right? It, you go the cheap way, it's it, it might be easier, but you're not gonna get the quality. Um, so let's talk a little about video marketing made simple, but not easy. It's a simple process. First, you just gotta determine your goals. Be very, very specific in your goals. I can't tell you how many people come to me and they are not clear on what they want to achieve with video marketing. They say authority, what kind of authority? Who do you want authority with? What's that authority gonna mean to you? What do you want your business to look like 18 months from now? Be very clear. Once again, this is simple. It's not an easy thing to sit down and do. Next up, you're gonna find your customer stories. Why? Because it will help determine a lot of things. Go out there and regular, set up regularly collecting your customer stories. Find someone to help you. Go through. We have a video case story course. This 10 video course. We'll put it to, a link to it down below. It tells you about collecting them, what to think about, how to do it. Of course, we can help you. You can go to videocasestory.com. We can help you. I don't want to just promote this. I'm just telling you that the reason I focus on this is because every time I get away from it, I get away from that fundamental and go through something sexy, I have to come back to this fundamental, right? Get really good at that turnaround jump shot and you neglect your free throws. Guess what's gonna happen? Your game's gonna wallow. You learn how to hit your driver 300 yards, but you don't, your putting suffers. And I see this all the time in golf. Your putting suffers, guess what happens? Your score goes up. Then things, talk about things going up. Your weight goes up, you lose focus on your diet. The diet can be very, very simple. It's not easy, but a diet is a core of getting stronger of any type of exercise you do. Same thing with any other exercise. So well, the reason I'm saying this is that's why I focus on customer stories. So start finding, collecting your customer stories, not testimonials, folks, not testimonials, but know your customer stories and then know their your customer scenes. One thing we do is the storyboard blueprint. You can download that too. Um, we'll put, you know, if, if you don't find the link for that, if you don't have that already, just comment below. We'll, we'll send you over the storyboard blueprint. Um, but that diet analyzes each of your customers, your ideal customer scenes. We decide because of moments. And if you can be there in those moments, if you know what they want and what they need in each moment, guess what's going to happen? You are going to be able to talk to them. You know, we sit down. If and you're driving in a car with someone, you know how to have a conversation with that person in the car. What you're trying to do, if you know your avatar, you know your ideal customer, you know their stories, but you don't know what stories to tell because you don't know that moment. Know their scenes, know your customer scenes, know what they want and need in each scene, and then know what you want them to do, right? Don't try and sell them. But if you're like, hey, I'm gonna create a content, right? Just think about a specific scene. Right. right now, maybe you're watching this video at home and you're trying to figure out your, your video marketing. You're not looking. I'm not going to try and give you a hardcore sell and come in working with our agency. All right. That's not what you want or need right now. You need to know the fundamentals. And that's what I want you to do. So I'm thinking about your scene. Think about your customers' moments. Because throughout the day, we're different people. I just dropped my son off at school. I come here, I work on some content, I write in the morning. Then I have a bunch of meetings lined up. I have a podcast later. I have a sales meeting later. I'm a different person at each one of those points. Then I go home and I cook dinner. Um, I you know, might go for a boat ride. 
Each one of those points, I'm a different person. Same thing throughout the journey. They're a different person. So you know the scenes, know what they want and need, and know what you want them to do next. Is it watch a video? Is it subscribe to your YouTube channel? Is it get the email? And then you create that content. You learn to tell that story. And you tell that story and you deliver it. You tell that story and you deliver it. And you tell the story and deliver it. You do that in a cycle. Know their scene. Know what you want, what they need and want in each scene. Know what you want them to do next. And then craft that story. Find those stories that fit there. They can be your stories. They can be other people's stories. Like the stories I told you. They're other people's stories. But I knew at this moment what I want to get across to you. And you become a better storyteller. It's as simple as that, but it's not easy. It is not easy. But if you do that over and over and over and over and over again, and you're consistent, you are going to win. You know, and you are going to win. And you'll get better. Like I said, you know, when I talked about changing chords, you learn. When I focus on just learning how to change chords, I learned oh how to place my finger better, right? How to move my finger from here to here better. I learned how to hold my hand better because I was just I wasn't trying to play the whole song. I was just trying to focus on the chords. When you focus on just knowing what they want and need in each scene, and you just focus on that little bit at a time, and then you focus on collecting the stories, and then you learn how to craft the stories just a little bit better, and don't try and do it all at once. And you go through this cycle, you'll get better and better and better and better at this. You know, one final example I want to give you is do me a favor. I'm taking stand-up comedy classes now. I want to become a better storyteller. I love stand-up comedy. I've always loved it. You know, when other people were watching, uh, were listening to music in the car, uh, and kids were, I would listen to stand-up comedians. My mom would once and let me, well, let me listen to Eddie Murphy, and then I would have to shut it off. But Stephen Wright, George Carlin, I was lucky enough that my parents were crazy enough to let me listen to all that stuff. I love stand-up comedy. But if you watch the progression of a stand-up comedian, you know, I think one of the, my favorite ones, if you watch early, like John Mulvaney versus John Mulvaney now, or Tom Segura versus Tom Segura now, watch their progression of four, five, six years. How much better do they get at telling the story? How much more crisp do they get? How much better their stories are? Their stage presence, their acting out. That's where you'll get better at video marketing. And find coaches. Like I said, I taking a stand-up comedy class. I read it. Find coaches. Find people to help you get your stuff out there. And if you really want to get this done faster, you hire a videographer. You hire someone who knows how to do this. But know that your videographer is not a marketer. You need someone who understands marketing, who knows how to coach you. That's why people want like that's why people get all excited to work with me. I'm not tooting my own horn on what I'm saying here. Is because I know their client scenes. I know what they want and need. I can put myself in there. So when I'm talking, I'm trying to get that content. I know who we're talking to and what we want to accomplish. So I can direct that. So that's what I want you to think about. Simple versus easy. This is a very, very big idea for you. But every time you're going to go move off and you're like, hey, that doesn't work. Think about where you could have maybe been a little bit better. Where could you be improved in the simple, the fundamentals and stay the course. Because it's the people that keep switching, right? If you keep switching, they're like, I'm gonna do a couple free throws and stop, and then I'm gonna do a couple jump shots, or I'm gonna practice my putting for a month, and then you forget about it for a year, or I'm gonna, I work on my diet for a month, and then all of a sudden you forget about it, and you wonder why you're not getting better. Wonder why, because you have to start all over. Establish that consistency, find that community, find that coach, find those people to help you and know what's simple and f work on the simple things first. Get simple first. And although it's not easy, you will get better. I promise you. And then you'll learn how to answer. We'll talk about this in the upcoming video, the $100,000 question. Because if you get really good at knowing that story and finding those scenes and find those stories that answer the $100,000 question, you're going to win over and over and you're going to win actually faster. So make sure to subscribe, check it out. Please let me know what you thought of the video. If you have any questions, if you are going to debate my stats, that'd be great. If you want to fact check my stats, that's fine too. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I want to hear from you. Please let me know where you're struggling, how we can help. I've been doing this for a long time. I love to help everyone that's a part of our community. But thank you. You know, if, you have, if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. If you're not watching this on YouTube, go join our YouTube channel. 
if you're not listening to this on Spotify, listen to Spotify. I've started listening to all the podcasts on Spotify. I think it's a lot easier. Um, but this has been Iron Garlic and the Garlic Marketing Show. Thanks again for taking me on your journey.